So in setting out uh, the balance sheet of the lender, it's clear that the shareholder's position uh, assumes many of the features of call option. Thus, the Merton Insight, that equity uh, can be configured as a, as a call option. Um, in examining this, a, a typical type of graph that sometimes was presented in order to elucidate a little bit how we can estimate what's known as the distance to def default or default probabilities to set out a, a frequency density for uh, asset price behavior. So if we assume that the uh, asset price conforms to geometric Brownian motion. So if we make the same assumptions that Black Scholes makes with regard to the asset price behavior, uh, we can generate a probability density or a probability distribution that will capture uh, the, the distribution of asset prices at some future time horizon. So if we consider a timeline and look at today and project forward one year as our time horizon, typically what we're interested in when we look at this type of structure is not the intrinsic payoff but actually the time value payoff and looking ahead one year our interest if the asset price if A for instance was equal to 100 and the liabilities were currently equal to 80. What we would be concerned about would be over at some time horizon, one year, that the assets would drop below the liabilities over that time frame. And then what is the probability that the assets would fall be below the time horizon? As, and if we assume that the assets adhere to geometric Brownian motion. If the asset price behavior is can be modeled by applying the Black-Scholes assumptions or conform with the Black-Scholes assumptions, then we can take the analysis to consider a situation to what or can we magnet, can we uh, estimate, calibrate the likelihood that the asset values can drop below uh, the level of liabilities. So previously, in the previous um, uh, analysis, I had looked at simulating asset prices and we had used this type of structure that the over a period of time that the stock price if you like, um, the change in the stock price, and I was looking at a period of one year, and I had broken down the uh, the time interval into um, months, and um, I had looked at this type of um, geometric ge geometric Brownian motion or random walk type behavior, where the change in the stock price, so the new stock price is the old stock price. And then I took an exponential, and the power on the exponential was a drift term by the change in the time step, by change in the time period, plus volatility. And then we had this uh, random normal shock times the square root of the time step. So this is this type of behavior is, is or this type of uh, asset price behavior is consistent with a geometric Brownian motion. And if we um, F9 here, of course we could change the, if we bring back the, um, take this down a notch, if we randomize each time the sequence, we can see that this behavior is very dynamic, but uh, and so, in effect, what I have here is a starting point of 100. So the stock's at time period zero. 
started at 100 and then they fan out. So if you like, we get this type of structure. So we can F9 and we can see how the asset price behavior changes just by these random movements. So we could structure this, this type of behavior. We could go back to um, our spreadsheet for a moment and we could go back to a simulation. And again, this is for a single pathway. So if we took the example of, let's say we were trying to mimic the behavior of the asset over one period, that could the value of the loans drop below 100? Okay, so if we go back and we, again, if the, if the deposits or the liabilities one of the liabilities was 80 so if the if the debt structure that we're using is at 80 then the default risk occurs when the stock price goes below 80 okay so in a sense what we're trying to ref mimic is when we're looking at the asset price behavior um, how often does the asset price go below 80? And if it does go below 80, right, then we run the risk. So here we have 80. If I increase the sigma here, of course, we have more risk. So if we increase sigma to, this is the Black-Scholes volatility. And we change the behavior, F9 we get much bigger swings in the asset price. So again, we can look at, consider how many of these simulations do we run and observe how frequently does the asset price fall below the uh, critical level of 80. Or the, if the liabilities were 80 and the assets were 100, how often does do the asset price culminate with value less than 80. If they fall below 80, it means that the asset price, it means that we're in default. Okay, so not often, in this instance, it's not occurring that often, but it does occur. Okay, so that's the type of analysis that has been considered here. But of course, if we assume that the Black-Scholes model, if we assume that the asset prices conform to Black-Scholes, then we can, we can, so we're looking at a frequency distribution. Now here it is normal, but, um, and we're assuming that we have a normal distribution, but it's for the returns on the assets. I mean, that might be better viewed if we looked at the, um, this graph here. When I modeled the stock price, over time, it doesn't have a normal distribution. In fact, it has a log normal, so it's skewed more towards, uh, if we F9, we can see that we don't have uh, a symmetric distribution. It's asymmetric, and some of these pathways go very far uh, north, but we're hemmed by zero here. So we don't have a, um, in reality have a normal distribution here we, we have a log normal distribution okay but if I took the logs in the table below here I've take taken the logs of the asset prices so I've taken the logs and uh, when I take the logs of the asset prices I do have something that con conforms more to a normal distribution okay so taking the natural logarithm of these asset prices does in fact produce uh, a, a normal type distribution. So we have to be careful in terms of uh, looking at our model here. It's not actually the asset prices, it's the log of the asset price and log of the liabilities. And that has those, the log, natural logs of those 
values do have a normal distribution, a more normal type distribution. So uh, how do we generate the um, the probability of default? Well, it's the probability that the asset price will be less than the uh, liabilities or the log of the asset values is less than the log of the liabilities. The, the logarithm has it does conform to the logarithm of the asset prices does conform to normal distribution and the so in effect what we're looking at is similar to uh, what's often referred in the literature as the distance to default um, and it's really a measure of the number of standard deviations uh, that the express that the uh, the asset value, so that the asset value at, um, in the future is away from default. Okay, so um, so we're looking to, at the asset price behavior, and we're looking at how far is the current asset price uh, from uh, liabilities. But we also have to incorporate in um a drift or a mean rate of growth because typically assets do uh change over time so the expected per annum change in log asset value would be this mu minus sigma squared divided by 2 where mu is the um the drift parameter right and the lowercase t, of course, the, the notes today. Uh, the log asset value in time capital T. So this is, you know, we could put here one year later would be capital T. So the log asset value in at time period capital T follows a normal distribution. Okay. And if we know L, um, the, the liabilities, the value of the assets today, the drift rate, and the uh, sigma, so the Black-Scholes volatility, um, we can then determine the credit risk or probability of default. Um, and this is just a basic exercise in statistical analysis because generally the probability if we take a variable and it conforms to a normal distribution the, the uh, probability that that variable will fall below the standardized variable Z is just the normal cumulative probability of Z minus the mean over the standard deviation we're just standardizing, we're just taking this distance to default is if you in effect a standardization in terms of converting the data, the asset price data and the liability data into a standardized a Z type construct that we would normally read from the normal distributions. So if you like uh, DD here, the distance to default really is a measure, measures in terms of standard deviation uh, to what degree the expected value of A at time period T, how many standard deviations will this be from uh, default and from that then we can uh, generate um, a prob probability of default. So if we paste in, if we want to generate the default probability, we take the distance of the, to default. So we could consider where do we project the asset price to be at time period capital T. And then the distance to default is the number of standard deviations away from that anticipation of uh, assets at time period T. And then the risk of default, probability default, is the normal cumulative probability of negative dd.